Hi guys, it's Denma. Welcome to the Wolf's Den, or welcome back to the Wolf's Den. As you can see, I'm in a weird location. Um, this is just a hotel room. My dad had to turn the power off Monday, to, which is today, well, yesterday technically, because it's about 28 Tuesday morning. But um, he had to turn the power off to replace the breaker and to trim some leaves around. We have an outdoor light. And we didn't know what time um, it would be back up, so I was just like, oh, let me just run a motel room for the night. Um, in Washington, which is like 20 minutes away, it's like $50 a night, so, you know, it stays in, it's, um, it's okay, I mean, you pay, how much you pay for, so, like, there's, like, some cracks up there, but, like, this isn't at home at all, so, but what the cool thing is, the mascot for this chain is Tormund from Game of Thrones, who's my second favorite character, after Brienne of Tar. so, um, yeah, I figured I would do a couple of videos, actually three um, videos. Um, I've been talking to like ZPC and some other people online and then trying to gather some questions that anybody had about um, my health, like my heart health and stuff like that. I'm a mental health because um, that's pretty self-explanatory. But um, yeah, I compiled 30 questions between them and him and because he still has questions about it and so I have got a like notepad up and I typed out the question and then typed out my answer so I'm kind of reading off of that so if you see me looking over here that's why I'm going to make this video a three-part video because my answers tend to be quite lengthy because I want to give you as much detail as I can so um, there'll be part one two and three at different times like of the week or like spread across like three weeks um but if you have any more questions feel free to comment below and i can put another video together uh, if you want to know about my mental health i think it's pretty much all been explained in the de um, depression and cerebral video i had but if you have any more questions about that i can answer those like i said i'm at the hospital i'm an open book i really don't get bothered by people asking questions i'm used to it curiosity never hurt anybody and if i can help somebody with that might be going through similar things with what i've experienced that just makes me feel better about me <laughs> and that just yeah i'd rather put myself out there a little bit more and help somebody than to keep all this a secret because it's part of me it's part of who i am so Question one, when were you diagnosed? I was diagnosed in February, March of 2016. I went in after nearly two years, like right, 18 months of not being able to catch my breath. Um, and at work when I would go to work the holiday stuff, like I, were, I managed the toy section and that's like, you have three extra trailers, like temporary trailers outside to get like toys in and store them. And then I had one lawn and garden stuff. Um, but when I would work out there, they're like maybe about 300 feet away from the store, like the garden center, because it's like Walmart here. Then the tr the parking lot or the delivery area is over this way. Um, and they were like in the farthest corner and back behind there is where they kept all their um, shelves and stuff for the outside um, and fixtures, like outside fixtures. Oh gosh. Okay, I was like, I was trying to pick my line up and it wouldn't come and I had my chair on it. Okay, that freaked me out. I'm very iffy with slime. But I would go out, try to walk up there, get some merchandise and look through it and see what, with toys, I knew what was selling. I like the zone, that area is so good. And I knew what was coming in, what was selling, all that stuff. Cause you get um, reports in the day or two before the, sh the stock comes in. So you can kind of like set up an end cap or something for the merchandise. Um, but yeah, I'd walk out there and I'd get so out of breath and so tired to the point I got dizzy and I almost passed out um, during the summer, like the warmer months. Um, even though we had a cooler I had gotten for my staff, we had it outside and there was ice in it and water. Um, so we also gave like the cart pushers use it so that way nobody would get dehydrated but even staying hydrated like that 
I would be outside like marking plants down, watering them, um, just moving the, them around, rotating them, um, and getting all like a marking it out, zeroing out the ones that were like dead that weren't gonna come back. Um, if I was out there for an extended period of time, I would almost pass out. And it wasn't that hot because of course we had the vest and like the cat, the dark blue maybe top, polo top, or t-shirt that's with our store number on it, and khaki pants, but it wasn't really that hot because there's a field in behind my garden center, and there's a field across from it, so there'd be a nice breeze. And I remember one time, I was so close to passing out that I literally had to sit down, put my head between my legs, and I had to get the um, assistant manager at the time to come out and just make sure I didn't make ambulance or anything. Uh, he was great. Um, I mean, he moved, so he went to another location. Um, but things like that. I just thought it was asthma or something like that. Um, so, and I didn't know it had to do with my blood oxygen level and that being so low because a normal blood oxygen level is supposed to be about 98%. Um, and mine was between 78 and 82 when I first started out. Um, and they had me on oxygen in the hospital, and every time I take, it would go up, but if I didn't want the cannula, which is a little nose, um, plug thingy, in my nose, because that gets, your nose can get raw, and they can use, like, a different solution that has, it doesn't dry your nose as bad, but it's still uncomfortable. After a long period of time, I just yank them out, and then my blood, air, blood oxygen level would drop, and they come in and force me to put on the cannulas again. Um, the mask which goes all over, is much better for me, but they said you don't get as much oxygen in because it's not like directly going in there. So, now my oxygen level is usually about 92, 93. Some days, like, I don't know why, it drops down to about 88, 89, but it's usually between 85 and 95, which is a lot better than 78, 82. And I can tell when it's getting low because I get a migraine or headache. I wouldn't really call it a migraine, I just would say a headache, a really strong headache. Um, but taking a few deep breaths does help that. So, question two. Was putting in the tube painful? This tube. I need to change my dressing on it. But yeah, that's how it goes in. Um, no, it wasn't painful. Alright, I was under the anesthesia. I call it waking anesthesia. It's the same kind of anesthesia they use when you're putting pacemakers in, basically to numb everything so you don't feel anything, but like a little bit of pressure maybe. Um, it sedates you some. Um, at first, in the second hospital, um, they put in a double lumen Hickman, which is similar to this, except this end has two um, ports that go in. And when I went to, to the third hospital, um, they wanted to change it out and put the single women, the single women hit men in, and it's also called a pick line. So I can refer, I refer to them as women hit men, but pick line I would do for this video. Um, and so that was the single women would have been easier for me to maintain because I wouldn't have to have a other port just to possibly get infected and all that good stuff they didn't want that so they decided they were going to switch it out um and they did it relatively quickly under the waking anesthesia um but uh, at first i was really scared and trembling and shaking because the doctor or the people that were doing it i don't know whether to call them surgeons or whatever um i'll call them the specialists the specialists were all um running around like chickens with their heads cut off because they were like trying to figure out what size and cause I had told them that, that I know I heard the doctor say a certain size like I think this one's an 18 gauge oh it's not up here anymore it's been so long it's it's rubbed off I'm pretty sure this is an 18 gauge or 20 gauge I think it was a 20 gauge um and I was starting to get cranky because I was panicking, nobody was telling me anything, and I told them I just wanted to know what, that somebody has confirmed that the one that you're getting ready to put into me is the one that the doctor wants to put in me because I'm not going to go through this again. 
Um, so that was like that experience. Um, like I said, it was really quick, like not even five minutes. The longest thing it took was prep and like getting, they didn't really have to prep too much, but getting me sedated to where uh, like, I have a high tolerance for sedation. So they had to give me um, three doses of the mixture that they used for me to just shut up and just lay there because I was talking, I'm like, oh, what's that, what's that? Because they had six or seven monitors up beside you with different things they're looking at. Um, so. And I was just like, this is so interesting. Plus I was getting like a little, not a buzz, but I was like, ah, fly, a little high there. Um, what was the worst symptom you had before you started treatment? Um, well, right before we went to the plantation, the Crown Palace, um, for the free weekend tour of the gardens or whatever, um, just to get out of the house, get Cody somewhere where he hasn't been in a while, um, and just have like a family fun day. Um, it was irritating because my, like for the two weeks prior before that day when I went to the ER, my vision in my left eye had started to get blurry and it sucked because I was in a big reading phase. Like I read all the time, but there's some times where I can read like a 500 page book with super tiny print in one day. Um, and so I couldn't read and that was frustrating. I couldn't watch like Netflix or TV or movies because I couldn't see, like when I try to watch it with both eyes open, it'd be blurry. So I'd have to go like this in order to really see anything clearly. And um, it was just, just frustrating. So, have you ever thought about getting the Life Alert bracelet or necklace or something similar? I have, but I'm not a caution for falls. I'm very, I haven't fallen since I was like eight, maybe, if that. I, I don't trip, I'm very observant of my surroundings so I don't stumble or trip or fall. Um, but my issue with me would be a passing out and I'm not sure if they work for fainting. Like I don't know if they have like a thing where it can measure how fast you fall down or measure it like that, if that makes sense. Um, I think they have to like press a button or something on the watch or the bracelet or the necklace in order for it to get to the help on the other end. My grandma had one and this was 10 years ago um, and that's how it worked for her but like I would be unconscious so I wouldn't be able to push the button um, to get help. So like I said I don't know if they've changed since then or if they have another version or something that works for people that have like fainting spells because that would be what I would need. Um, but usually I'm home and there's usually at least one person around me inside the same place that I'm at. Question five, is your condition painful? Um, my heart problems really aren't painful. My back pain can cause um, tightening in my chest because when I get back pain, I tense up and I tend to hold my breath to kind of ease the pain a little bit. So then if I do that for a while, my chest kind of gets tight. And after being tense for so long, it can get a little sore, but it's not like due to my heart, I guess. Like, it's not provoked just by itself. It makes me, I have to do it in order for it to feel like that. Um, or if I cry a lot, like um, when I found out Anton Yelchin had died, I had only been out of the hospital for two months um, in 2016, and I cried so hard, and my chest. Oh my god, it hurts so bad, and my lips, whenever I cry a lot, my lips swell up, like, Kylie Jenner, um, circa 2017, I mean, they just, like, duck bill, I don't know why, does anybody else have that, if you cry a lot, your lips swell up, because, yeah, it's, a, it's really weird, but I cried a lot that day, and, like I said, the June 16th and March, I think March 14th, which is his birthday, it's, um, it's really hard and I cry a lot during those days. I also go in like a hibernation mode where I kind of disconnect from real life and just focus, like get distracted on the internet. Like I don't even, this doesn't have any feeling in it whatsoever. I don't feel it. Like if it tug, like see I tug on it just a little bit and it doesn't bother me. Um, but I've got tape down here 
I can't really show you because of where it's located at, but I've got tape around it so that if so happens, it get, if it gets snagged, it'll pull on that tape and pull the tape off before it gets a pin and pulls this out. Like if, say, Gatsby ran and snagged this, it would probably ink it out because he's a hundred pound pit lab mix. So, um, what is the most embarrassing thing about your condition? Okay. Well, other than being seen in the buff um, at the last two hospitals by medical students, when I first got all this put in, um, that was weird because I'm extremely shy. Um, but it doesn't really, it, I was shy, but I'm like, I know they have to learn, so I was like, okay with it. Um, they're doctors in training, they need to learn what things are, so, I mean, it's not like they were exclusively looking at my boobs or my Pikachu. They were just, like, observing, like, um, a lot of times it was my ankles or my feet because you can get swelling in your extremities, and they were looking at my stomach and just looking at the incision, all that type of stuff. I guess it's... The most embarrassing thing probably is having to use electric scooters in stores, like large stores like Walmart or Target or a grocery store. Anywhere where I'm, I can't, I'm not going to be in there for any more than 10 minutes or if it's a small store and I pace myself like, you know, like the Dollar Tree or something like that. Another kind of embarrassing thing is I can't wear underwire bras because they put too much pressure on my chest and it just makes it hard to breathe. Um, and my, it puts, I don't know why, but it makes my heart, like, my, it feels like it's fluttering in my chest, so I usually just wear, like, a camisole tank top underneath my shirt if I'm out in public, or, like, a sports bra or support bra that is, like, two sizes too big because it still gives me enough support, but it doesn't put too much pressure on my chest. I've got these three that I got off of clearance um, at Walmart, a black and a gray and a white one, and they're just perfect. They're really comfortable. They're racer backs. But the white one I put on after taking a bath at home, and now like part of it's a dye at the top, but it's fine. Um, but yeah, they have some special like um, ones the pharmacy you can get, but they're like really expensive. So I just like I said, get a couple size bigger and try them on in the store to see if they're tight. Um, and they usually work out pretty good. Now if I'm home, I'm usually in my pajamas, but the girls are loose when they get home, so. Um, you probably rarely see me with a ball when I'm home unless it's one of those three sports balls because they are just so comfortable. Um, I can't remember what brand they were, but I've got one in my backpack over there, so. Um, but sorry, not sorry. I know it's like TMI, but how many medications do you take? Um, including this pick line, um, which is my relief tree, um, mid just for my heart and lungs, um, there's five. Um, which are the Velitri, um, Adempus, I take that one three times a day, Lasix, which is a diuretic that helps get, keep the fluid out of, like, from building up because that can put a lot of strain on your heart, um, Lateris, which also it works with the Adempus to help hypertension symptoms, and Amiodarone, which I talked about in my last video, the ER emergency room vlog that helps to prevent palpitations, it helps regulate that rhythm. Um, then I have meds for my back and my anxiety and my depression. I have a total of 16 pills a day I have to take, not including the tram at all, which is my back medication, which I take two at a time. And if I have to go out, I take two before I start walking, like about 15, like on the way there. And then I take two on the way home because oh, if I have to walk, it after about 10 minutes, it sucks. Oh. And it, it really sucks because your body gets dependent on it too. So you must be good at swallowing, monkey face. Well, I'm good with the round tablets. Like the regular like round tablets. But not the odd long ones if they're like really big or big capsules. Um they can be a little challenging because like, I have to take a meprazol so that when I eat I just don't get nauseous afterwards. And it's a pretty big capsule one. If it hits like the back part of my mouth, before I'm ready to swallow it, I'll gag it right back up and have to try to retake it and it's just not fun. I am supposed to be on potassium, um, 20 MEQs a day, but those are freaking horse pills and you're not supposed to break them in half. And as soon as they get in your mouth, they start disintegrating. And I just like, mm, 
I'm fine. I'm not taking that. I have the low end of normal, but they always want it to be a little bit higher, but sorry, not sorry. Can't help you there. <laughs> I'm gonna take it. Question nine. Did you have to adjust your diet? Um, well, I'm supposed to be on a low sodium diet. Since I don't usually eat more than one meal, like one large meal a day, which is usually dinner, then I snack on things like a string cheese, piece of string cheese, or like low sodium potato chips. Um, I'm not a big eater. Um, I have to like make a mental effort to eat, which I don't have any eating disorders or anything. It's just been that way ever since I was in like middle school because I've always been getting nauseous after I eat for decades so I'm so used to not eating um, and now that I'm a result I can actually enjoy food so yeah retraining my body to eat is fun but um since I don't eat but like one big meal a day in the snacks I don't even come close to the daily intake um, limit of the sodium um, or for sodium the only time I really watch it is like when I'm going out to eat because um, I know a lot of fast food or like restaurants, the, the food is packed with sodium. So I used to get caffeine free tea, which I didn't know was a thing, or water. Um, every once in a while I'll get a soda, but I really don't drink much soda. Like I can get a 24 pack of uh, canned soda in the last you know, like three or four months. So um, if I'm in the hospital for an extended period of time though, they put me on the boring low sodium diet, which like everything on the diet doesn't have any taste to it. So, but usually when I'm in the hospital, I can't eat. Um, I mentioned that in the hospital vlog. Um, I don't know why, but I just can't. I usually just get hot chocolate, uh, whole milk, and sweet tea. Usually in the nurse stations, they have milk or snacks and juices, and they have. Um, Shasta, which is like sugar-free soda or something like that. It still tastes good, but it's all our stuff is sugar-free, like graham crackers, jello. So usually I can eat the jello if I do get hungry. I'll ask for one of those and she, they usually bring me two and then a little Shasta cola and some ice and I'm all set. Um, usually my mom, the past two times I've gone to the hospital, my mom has been there and stays there because she stays in one of those little recliners beside the bed that like stretch out into an actual bed and so I, when I order my food I usually get something that she'll eat because I know I'm probably not going to eat it so that way she doesn't have to pay for food and it doesn't get wasted and the last question for this video is are you on disability do you have a handicap placard for your car yes I am on disability um, I am unable to work because I cannot lift over 10 pounds, even though I have the strength to, I'm not allowed to because they said about something about point, like it'll, it can mess with the line inside, so I don't want to do that. Um, I don't want any complications, and there aren't any office jobs around here, like the closest office jobs are between 4 and 5 minutes and an hour away, and with gas prices the way they are, it's not worth it, um, because I used to work at the Walmart and my old where I used to live and that was 45 minutes away from where I live now and I wasn't a manager I was just working at um, the fabric and crafts department which is not the highest paid like retail job but it's like jewelry fabric and crafts hunting in the paint department and electronics get a higher pay than just stockers or just regular employees um, like the service areas um, get more of you get a higher paycheck, but even then it's just expensive um, I It sucks because I'm one of those weird people that like school and I like to go into work And it's the only place I could really socialize without feeling super anxious Because like I would have regular customers come in and talk to me and then I had like little click of, that I, of weirdos um, and nerds that we would just take our breaks together because we were all in different apartments and take lunch together and like play Pokemon Go or watch like an anime episode or something or just talk World of Warcraft. Uh, my last job at the Walmart as a manager for two years before I had to quit. Um, and before that I was like, like I said, the other location for four years. Um, 
so and I've been working since I was 14 years old. I got a worker's permit so I could work at a comic book shop until the manager of the shop tried to get me alone in the back room and found out he was a child predator so I quit that job. Then he later got caught and got sent to jail because he arrested one of my acquaintances from school's little sister. I wouldn't call her a friend but she was in one of my classes and we talked and we were friendly but she wouldn't be one of those people that I would hang out with you. The reason I transferred to this new location is because my dad was going through dad was going through a bone marrow transplant and they needed somebody to go watch their dogs. They had three dogs at the time. Um, two of them have passed away and they've gotten another one. Um, but I needed to watch them so I moved up here and transferred and because the Walmart that I work at maybe like 15 minutes away from home it just it and they had a job opening in toys. They wanted to replace the work. I love her to death, but she's um, so sweet, but she's so slow. So they were like, you want to switch jobs? I was like, heck yeah. I don't care if I have to do lawn and garden and the party section, like with the gift like cards and the party supplies and like the hot box, which is like the seasonal stuff, like back to school, Halloween, you know, pool stuff, all that stuff. Um, because he said that the guys that were working in my apartment would be the ones doing the heavy lifting that I didn't have to worry about that because he knew I had back issues. And, but he knew I was super efficient with my work and I would always help out my manager when she was a manager before I became the manager. And I would help her with her stuff. So we just switched positions. And it worked out really good for a while until, like I said, I had to quit. Um, and it sucks because that was my dream job. I know it's a small goal, but I wanted to work in the toy section, be it a manager or just a stalker because I love toys and I collect half the stuff I sell, so, <laughs> um, but when my dad came home, he had to have some kind of injections. I can't remember what they were for like a couple of weeks afterwards. Um, and he had all these other medications. He had to they do the bone marrow transplant. They basically take your cells out, like some cells out and put filter them and put new cells back in. I don't know, I'm sure you guys know more about it than I do. Um, he was up there for like six weeks and he came back and since they didn't feel comfortable doing the injections and so I have experience injecting um, animals because I was a vet tech for a, a whole bunch of years. So I had some experience with injections, so they felt more confident for me to do the injections, even though humans and animals are completely different. But I did it the first time, my dad's like, he didn't even feel it. And we compared his, um, the nurse where she had injected him to where I had injected him, and he was so bruised where the nurse had injected him, mine didn't bruise at all. I was like, good job. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, we have a handicap placard on my parents' car and van. They have, my dad has like this van that he calls his work van, even though it doesn't work, it has all those tools and stuff in it. Um, because, um, we have the placards because having a weak cardiovascular system causes me to get tired walking short distances. Like, every time I go to Duke um, for a follow-up, I have to do a six-minute walk. And that's, like, torture. But I'm not even close to being halfway normal, so... I, like, can walk the distance, like, one-fourth of the distance of a normal person before our, my heart rate starts, like, getting up there. Um, but, so we have the placard, and if we can find a spot that's close to the entrance of the store without having to use a handicapped spot, we will, because... I want to have that spot open for somebody who might have a more serious condition or might have to have like one of those vans that the wheelchair comes out of and the ramp and everything and I want them to be able to use it. So if it's not too far, like if it's like a couple spaces close to the handicap section, I'll, I'll pull in there. Um, but we don't use it like all the time. Like there are some times where I'm like, I can't stand up due to my back pain and I have to like walk over hunchback because of that. But like I said, we use it every once in a while but we do have it just in case there are bad days um so so that was the first 10 questions in my heart story q a session um i'm going to record part two and i hope to see you there bye guys mm -hmm.